Hi, this is PD at Berkshire Arcade at BerkshireArcade.com and this is tutorial 225. Now there's really only one thing left to cover on our particle system, at least as far as the components go, and that would be the trail renderer. Since we've gone over at least the others enough to you know, understand how they work, uh, you still need to spend some time working with them to learn what they can, what you can really do with them. It's basically just a matter of you know, flexing those creativity muscles, but uh, let's go ahead and take a look at the trail renderer. So I'm going to start off, I'm going to grab that sword that we have in the scene. And if I head over to my scene view, we'll zoom in on it. And I'm going to go ahead and add a game object into my scene. It's just going to be an empty. And I'm just going to call this tail or trail. Uh, let's just call it trail renderer. And I'm going to go ahead and parent that to my sword or sorry, I guess child it to my sword. And I'm gonna go ahead and reset everything on it. And then I'm gonna come ahead and to that new game object we created, we're gonna add our trail renderer. Now you can add it directly to the sword, uh, but one of the options here is auto destruct. And basically when, it, when that is, if you have that checked and it does auto destruct, it's gonna destroy whatever it's attached to. And that's not exactly what we want. Uh, we don't want it to destroy the sword. We just want it to destroy the trail renderer. Uh, so let's go ahead and take a look at this. What, what exactly does it do? Uh, just like all the other particle systems, we can just turn off cast and receive shadows because I've never been able to actually get it to cast and receive shadows. And I don't believe it actually does. Uh, materials, uh, well, it's just like materials for everything else. You know, you just select your material. By default, it has none. And if we were to start moving this around, you just get this big pink thing. Uh, not exactly what we want, so I'm going to go ahead and add a material to it. And since it's a fire sword, I'm actually going to look for a fire material. And it does not look like it supports you uh, being able to have UVs. Uh, so I'm just going to pick a single material. So I'm just going to go with this uh, fire add. Well, let's go with fire and smoke uh, for the material. And let's just keep going down the list of uh, what all the options are. Now, time is basically how long uh, you want the trail renderer to last. So if you were to go, uh, let's say one, and let's grab the sword. Actually, let's zero out the trail renderer now because I did move it around. And I'm going to grab the sword. I'm going to zoom out a bit. And for some reason, I'm not actually grabbing the sword. Well, I am grabbing the sword, but it's ah, the trail renderer is throwing it off. And we start moving this around. Um, look at this trail render again. Well, let me just start this up. I'm going to move this over here. I'm going to get him in position to actually see the sword. All right, there we go. And I'm going to go over to the scene view. I'm uh, going to zoom in on the sword in the scene view. And I'm just going to start moving the sword around. So as we see, it has this kind of fiery trail. And the longer you make the, uh, let me grab the sword here. The longer you make the time, uh, it's basically the length of the tail. So if I were to go ahead and leave that, um, well, let's jack it back up to five, the default. And I start moving it around again, you'll notice it has a much longer tail. And it looks like my tail is actually quite a bit further away from my sword. Uh, let me select the sword again. Uh, the offsets seem a little bizarre for my sword. I'm not 100% sure why. Ah, the trail renderer. Put those at zero, grab my sword. There we go. Now, of course, you actually have to have five seconds before it actually starts destroying itself. And if we were to zoom out, we'll see that it's going around and destroying itself. Uh, what I want, I do want a trail render attached to my, my sword for when they swing, but I do not want it to be huge. So I'm probably actually going to go with something like a one second uh, trail renderer. And I'm going to go ahead and click click on my sword again, zoom in, and 
it's screwing up because the, the position is screwing up because of uh, the trail renderer. So I've actually got to find the sword in the scene. I'm just going to stop and restart. There we go. And I'll just go over to my sword. Get my little hands. And with a one second, I'm going to be using the script to turn it on and off. I'm not going to be using auto destruct, but when they swing, you can get this little uh, trail to go along with it. And actually, let's go ahead and attach this to the player. Give it a little bit more of a demonstration of it in your actual game. So I'm going to go over to the weapon mount. Here we go. And grab my sword again. I'm going to parent it to my character. I'll make sure I select the sword. I want to zero out the position and the rotation. I'm actually going to put this up to full screen again. And now when the player runs, he's got this trail behind him, obviously too big. If we're to right click and run. Now, kind of a cool effect. Not exactly what we want. And that actually might work pretty good. I clicked off the scene before I let go of the button. But uh, if we take the sword, we open up the, it would be the mesh particle emitter. And we click on simulate world in space so it's turned off so the fire always sticks to our weapon. But now when we run, we still get that trail. It still, it still doesn't quite look right on the weapon. Uh, but it is something we can work, keep working on. Uh, but let's look at some other properties for the trail renderer. So I'm going to open up the sword, go to the trail renderer. Uh, start width and end width. You can actually change you know, the width properties of your trail renderer. And... I'm going to jack up the start width to just kind of demonstrate. I'm going to make it a 2. And I'm going to make the end width 0.1 just to demonstrate exactly what this does. And now when I run, uh, you'll notice how wide it is at the start of the trail. And at the end of the trail, it really tapers off quite a bit. Uh, that's what that's for. Uh, colors, it's just like in your particle animator. It, uh, well, you can just change the colors of it. Uh, the min vertex distance. This is something we'll probably, well, you might be able to see it in here. You'll notice that when you run, you, know, you can't really see the vertexes. You'll notice in this particular demonstration, you have those little lines showing up. Uh, those are the vertexes. If we actually went over to the scene view, and let me go over and look at this guy. I'm actually just going to move the trail render around a bit. And I'm actually going to increase the time so they stay. When I start moving these around, you'll see all these vertexes here. And of course, if I start cranking it up, yeah, I move, you'll notice these are the vertexes. Uh, we can change the minimum vertex distance to kind of help not get those uh, overlaying vertexes. So let's say 0.5. I'll just jack it up. I'm going to go ahead and zero this out so it's back on the sword. And, well, let's just move it around again. So now when I move it around and I start bending, it's not quite so... Well, you don't get those little hot spots where it overlaps. Uh, let's go ahead and look at it in game. Uh, it seems that it actually made it worse. So I'll just keep playing around with this. Maybe a point two. I might actually have to go the other way, make it smaller. Uh, 0.01. Well, that, <laughs> that gives quite the visual effect. Uh, I still have a time of 5. And I don't really want it like that. So 0.5, 0.5. I'm not going to screw with the, the colors. There we go. That's kind of the effect I'm looking at. Uh, if you notice, a lot of the assets I'm using from Pro Games are very angular. So I actually want my particle effect to be quite angular. Uh, I don't want such a realistic flame effect. Uh, so that's 
pretty close to what I want, but of course I only want it to go off when the player is actually attacking. And to be honest, that's a lot longer than I want uh, for my player attack animation. So to be honest, my time will probably be about half of that, 0.5. So yeah, that's about the length I actually want it at. So when I swing my sword, I'll be getting um, about that length of uh, trail render. And of course, like I said before, auto destruct. If you have this ticked, uh, let's start it up. There we go. It destroyed itself. So when your time runs out, it's gone. Uh, let me just stop this so we get it back. Uh, let me just readjust my value. I think I had 0 0.5. I did small. I think it was all 0.5s here. I'll have to tinker around, find the settings that I wanted. Uh, I'm going to leave that at 0.1. I'm going to go to my scene, find my sword. And this is kind of the way I always do it. I just come in and I just move it around. But yeah, that looks pretty good. That's pretty much the way I want it. Uh, anyway, that's the trail renderer. I'm probably going to be adding this to quite a few uh, different effects in game. Uh, maybe when the chest opens up later on, I'll be adding one to uh, have the chest, like a trail render for the chest opening and closing. Uh, I actually like the effect, and it's not that taxing. Uh, so I'll probably be adding it to quite a few different things. But anyway, like usual, uh, let's uh, see what trail renderers you set up for your game, and uh, just upload it as a video response to this video. Anyway, thanks for watching. Bye-bye.